We have a really, really great show tonight. Please welcome the closest thing we have to a star of Seven Second Delay, the king of ambling on stage like he couldn't care less, oh. Andy Breckman. Hi. You're the only person who ambles onto his own talk show. I'm giving the impression that I'm cooler than everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we do have a great show tonight. We have the New Jersey Radio Museum with us. And that was W-R-A-N in Dover, New Jersey. W-R-A-N. Yeah. What was their nickname? Bendover. <laughs> That, isn't that fantastic? We're actually getting an award. They, oh, we're actually getting a, a Lifetime Achievement Award. The embarrassing thing is we had to call them and ask them <laughs> to give it to us. But they resisted yeah. uh, very little. We have uh, stunt comedian Mark Malkoff What does that tonight. mean, stunt comedian? It started at $20, and they said no, and I got up to $40, $50, and I got up to $85 for a piece of pound cake. Uh, we have Michael, our, music, our musical guest, Michael Hurst. I can't believe we have him. And for fans of Wait, there, Tennessee you know, there Williams... Was guy, there was a guy oh, from uh, One Ring Zero named Michael Hurst. That's the same guy. <laughs> you have the girls from... Uh, oh, Tennessee Williams fans naked, are going to be overjoyed. Yeah, naked girls. Especially if you're a fan of the Glass Menagerie. Yeah. You'll be able to see the whole Glass Menagerie tonight, baby. We have with us <laughs> naked girls reading. So one of you will be a man. Yes, okay. it won't be hard. Right. But, but naked, that's kind of new. And that'll drive our listeners at home insane. Should warn uh, people here that uh, here in the studio that the UCB does have a uh, rule about masturbating in the theater. And uh, like, I don't make the rules. If it was up to me, you know, I'd go crazy. <laughs> Is it zero tolerance? <laughs> yeah, it's zero tolerance. I, I, th I, I thought it was three strikes and you're out. <laughs> you live on a plane for a month, you see weird things. Like, um, uh, I did this thing called the toilet paper experiment, where if you put one end of the toilet, uh, the toilet paper in the toilet and unravel the whole thing, like, 100 feet down the aisle and press flush, the whole thing gets sucked in in three seconds. So make a note, uh, no masturbation. And that applies, by the way, during uh, all the acts. Right, during, it's during, not just during the girl, during, during the big presentation from the museum, that applies too. Please, people. You got to follow the rules. Okay. I'm still a little confused whether it's zero tolerance or three strikes. You've got wood, it's, uh, you've got some glass, it's a museum quality. Oh, uh, we don't say got wood tonight because of the girls. Why don't we bring out our, uh, our new friends? from the Museum of Broadcasting. Yes, Andy, we right. have the President and the Vice President of the New Jersey Radio Museum. Please welcome President Rich Phoenix and Vice President Big J Sorensen. <laughs> and what is it about New Jersey Broadcasting that, that gives it its essence? We're like uh, what Ben Franklin said about the state, where beer keg tapped at both ends. It means the world to us to, uh, to not have you hang up on us when we asked you to. <laughs> <laughs> There was present. a moment of hesitation I after know. we heard the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I begged you not to no, actually, actually hear the show. I, I think this is cool. You see, because this is the free form of free form. And it it's, certainly it's, is. It's, it's wonderful. I, I, I think this kind of radio is so cool. CBS plays good music. Once in a while, yeah. enjoy. I would think we do. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about that. And FMU has a completely different philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll read the proclamation. Absolutely. We're wasting time. It's only an hour show. That's right. New Jersey Radio Museum Honorary Longevity Proclamation presented with heartfelt pride to WFMU Radio's seven second delay in recognition in recognition of 20 years distinguished service in the propagation and encouragement of humor to radio listeners in New Jersey, New York, and worldwide. Hmm. Whereas Andy Breckman and Ken Friedman... Who are they? These guys. Oh. Nearly 20 years ago, yeah. took to the then modest WFMU airwaves from the campus of Sala College in East Orange, New Jersey... Which doesn't exist anymore. That's right. They ruined it. In yeah. their we honest made, and forthright sure that... efforts to propagate their own humor to the needy ears of the greater metropolitan listening area. Is there an end to this? Sometime. <laughs> Go ahead. And whereas yeah. Andy and Ken's grasp of humor was mm -hmm. deemed sincere and worthwhile by WFMU management and listeners, <laughs> they were never booed, and their program never found to be a dreaded tune-out factor. <laughs> and as we approach the 20-year anniversary of 7 Second Delay on WFMU, 
There was never a miscue nor incident of aberrant taste <laughs> or offense in their humor, except for this evening. Yeah. Uh, and, and they have survived two decades of change at 91.1 megahertz on the Metropolitan Dial, as well as the demise of the highly respected Uppsala College, and consistently provided humor throughout. Now, therefore, uh -oh. be it resolved yes. that the New Jersey Radio Museum declares such mm -hmm. longevity of a New Jersey-based radio show a great rarity. So why are we in New York? Because we rode the PATH train, that's oh, how. Yeah. And a occurrence to be Very not only smelly train too. revered, but marked with great jollity and a permanent record in the museum's vast re repository of worthy documentation and collectibles. So be it finally resolved. Finally! That the, that's right. Finally resolved that the August membership of this great museum does unanimously recognize greatness in our midst and does declare a seven-second delay fully deserving of this honorary recognition this 10th of August, 2011. Wow. Congratulations, wow. guys. Who wants to take this man. thing from me? There you go, man. Look at that. I'd really like to thank uh, my high school teacher, Robert Knoll, <laughs> um, who recognized my talent in radio very early on. 30 years ago, if somebody had told me that I would be standing here tonight receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award from the New Jersey Radio Museum, I probably would have said, Oh my goodness! Oh. Who are you? How did you get in here? I probably would have kept him talking while secretly trying to call the authority. Or, if I couldn't reach a phone, I'd probably try to gesture behind my back and try to flag down a passerby. But then, years later, after I've been doing the radio show for a while, I'd probably remember the old guy and those weird predictions, and I'd say, one hour, for the love of God, Ken. Holy Christ, maybe he really was psychic, and I'd think I should track him down because, you know, I would want to ask him about other stuff, but then I'd probably probably stop and say, wait a minute, he's probably still mad at me because the last time I saw him, I called the police. So I'd go to the bank and take out $500 because I figure even if he was still pissed off, he's a psychic and would probably do a reading for $500. So I'd knock on his door and I'd say, hello. And he'd say, hello. And I'd say, do you remember me? And he would say, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> And then I'd stop and I'd think, wait a minute, if he was really psychic, he would not say, what do you want? A real psychic would know what I wanted. Maybe he was just lucky 30 years ago when he said that thing about being on the radio. Or maybe he used to have special psychic powers and then somehow lost them over the years. But either way, I'm certainly not paying him $500 today. So I'd just say, never mind, and I'd walk away. And then I'd feel pretty good. I'd feel like I just made $500. And everybody knows that feeling. It's like if you're planning to buy something or planning a big vacation, and then you change your mind at the very last minute, you feel like you made some money, even though in reality you didn't earn a nickel, it's just a trick of the mind. So I'd probably feel pretty good for the rest of the day. Well, maybe not the whole day. Probably for about a half hour. Well, I'm out of time. Thank you for this award. And I'd also yeah. like to thank all my colleagues at WFMU for providing a support system in the face of um, Andy's constant sarcasm and negativity. Because times are tight. Uh, we could auction this off right now. And... Uh, uh, I could make enough money to go see Planet of the Apes. How much would you bid for this award? Let's go. How about cutting the rug a little, Miss Wingfield? Oh, but I'd step on you. <laughs> would you bid? Would you bid three dollars? Would you get three? Would you get three? Would you get three? Three dollar bid. Would you get four dollar bid? Four dollar bid. Would you get four? Now four. Four. We got five. Five dollar oh, no. bid. Got five. Would you get five? Would you five now? Five now. Five. Go away. Is that? Ma'am, nine dollar bid. We got nine. We got nine. Nine now. We get ten. We get ten. Twelve dollar bid. Twelve. Thirty dollar bid. Thirteen dollar bid. We got fourteen. We get four. Fifteen. You just bid, ma'am. You already at fourteen. The $10, frame $10, is $10, worth twenty dollars. We get seventeen dollar bid. We get seventeen now. We get seventeen. We get seventeen. Seventeen dollar bid. Seventeen dollar. No withdrawing bids over there. <laughs> twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Twenty. We get twenty five. Oh! Thirty. Thirty. Get thirty dollar bid. Thirty dollar bid. We get. Ken, <laughs> we should have been doing this on every show. So oh! forty dollars. Thank you very much. He's, he seems great. Yes, he he's does. Done, he's done. He's done stuff that people, well, I can't say they dreamed of doing, but once they hear about it, they dreamed of doing it. Uh, and uh, very funny, very nice guy. And I think what I like best about him is uh, he seems to be a big fan of mine. So let's bring him out now, Mr. Mark Malkoff. Now, Mark, you do this stuff like going to every Starbucks. For for uh, you do this as part of your uh, show on my damn channel. Yeah, I do these videos. Um, I do these weird conceptual pieces that just kind of make me laugh. And a lot of the premises are, can't is this possible? I wanted to see if it was possible to go to every single Starbucks store in Manhattan, all 171, in less than 24 hours, make a purchase, consume something, and not die. And, and you also lived on a jet for 30 I days. I lived on an airplane for 30 days to get over my fear of flying. It was a commercial airplane. 
Um, I set a Guinness World Record but for most flights. But you weren't on constantly. Yeah. No. That's Wait, that's my life. That me- and how do you pay the rent? <laughs> I noticed for t- about two years that the Apple would let customers do things you could never do in any store. There's hundreds of online videos of people dancing. What 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 can you get away with? So I did uh, this video called Apple Store Challenge where uh, I brought a goat into the Apple Store on 67th and Broadway. And I was in there for 15 minutes and they said nothing. I was so terrified that they were going to like call the cops. But apparently you can bring... Barnyard animals into the Apple store. Huh. That got you kicked out of the Apple store? No, it didn't. Nothing got me kicked out. I ordered a pizza to the second floor of the Soho store, and they, they thought it was cool. Um, I went on a date with my wife to the Fifth Avenue location with a musician that played trumpet, and I had a waiter serve me dinner. They were cool with that. They took photos with me. I'll bet you $100 cash yes. right now I could get kicked out of an Apple store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was really interesting and funny, but we have naked girls waiting. One girl's named Nasty, and another girl is named uh, Gal Friday. You'll regret it, but you won't regret it very much. That's our promise to you. That's sort of my motto. It is. I hope I regret this. (laughs) I hope I regret this. So you have monthly readings of Naked Girls reading? We do, yeah. We we do them at Madam X, and we do different themes, and we usually have about uh, four or five uh, Naked Girls reading. It's actually um, usually a lot of couples. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. But there are... But there are guys that show up alone, though. Yes, yeah. there are, and well, we make know, sure that they can. sit in the back. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that we called that? The uh, was it the creep corner? Yes. Something yeah. like that. Creepy dude seating. Yeah. We you know can't, who you, you can are. barely Don't see worry. anything from back there. Yeah. And once a month at the naked girls reading, and then is that cover your nut? Is that it? We work I a lot of other places, and rarely, I mean, rarely are concerned with covering our own nuts. I have to say. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I see. Okay. It, I mean, please welcome. Uh, nasty and uh, and Girl Friday. Gal. Gal yeah, Friday. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not made of glass. <laughs> How do we start? Just leave it to me. Hold your arms out a little. Uh, I'm afraid you can't budge me. <laughs> what do you bet I can? Oh goodness, yes you can. Let yourself go now, Laura. Just let yourself well, go. I, I, Come I'm on. trying. Not so stiff. Easy I does know. it. I, I'm, I'm not. Loosen the backbone. There. Th- that's a lot oh, better. My. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. What did we just hit on? Tennessee Williams, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, we'd love to have you back here for my daughter's birthday party. Well, please. <laughs> we have something for everyone. So our next guest is uh, not naked. Is that how it works? He is not naked. Oh, he, then who cares? Yeah. Essentially tired of uh, the same song that you hear right. every single day a thousand times in New York and decided it was time to uh, write and record a whole new album of ice cream truck songs. Is that what we're going to hear now? Wouldn't that be a trip, like, to actually hear your music coming out of an ice cream truck on something? I thought I heard it one time, and then I realized it was my ringtone, which I had set to one of my songs. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not 100% sure if I was with my small children, I'd send them running toward the truck playing the Plan 9 from Outer Space (laughs) theme. You go, kids. Always wanted a theremin player on the show. Yeah, it sounds really... You've never had one before? Never. No, awesome. Sounds great. Thank you. Yes, we are going to try. Thank you all. This so is, our, uh, pro- our producer, Laura Griffin, said uh, last week, she said, hey, we should get more women on the show. So this should shut her up. Yeah. Good, good job there. <laughs>